Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today the question is, does bias in research mean that we can't trust research anymore? This is a good question, and I've seen this a few times. And when we think of research, of course, we think of a process that's followed, the scientific method, and that involves data collection and measurement and writing up results and the end result should be something that we can apply to real life. So research should be good and research should be helpful. And we accept that in quantitative research anyway, random error is gonna play a part in distorting the validity of results. But research bias is a different issue. Research bias can be anything from research that's done in a lazy way or somebody's not attentive, all the way up to fabricating data or fabricating results. So can we trust research? Well, generally, I believe we can. Generally, I believe that when scientists follow the scientific method and produce articles or produce manuscripts that become articles when they get published, that generally this is a good system. It's better than a lot of other systems that we have thought of meaning the end result is knowledge and advancing knowledge. And this can be used to help individuals, to help society in general. However, there is the problem of research bias, and it is particularly troubling in some areas, although I think these areas are fairly clear for many people, when we see research in the area of politics or a social issue that for whatever reason has become polarizing or when someone has a lot of money at stake. We tend to think of this type of research in general, those types, as being particularly subject to bias. And that makes sense. But when it comes to bias in the research of issues like mental health treatments, why would somebody intentionally, or why would somebody even be reckless in how they put together research and how they inject bias into findings. Well, there are a lot of reasons that bias exists even when the research topic isn't necessarily polarizing, even when a lot of money is not at stake. It's part of human nature and perfectly understandable that when somebody launches a research project, they're going to know what findings they want to see in the end. So say that a new mental health treatment is developed and it treats some specific disorder perhaps a disorder that's been treatment resistant. This is exciting news. Now there is some money at stake, but I think a lot of people that invent treatments don't necessarily do it for the money. Of course, they earn money as part of doing that, but I believe their primary motivation is to help individuals with mental health disorders. But there's still a sense of accomplishment for them, and they want their new treatment to work. It's hard to imagine many people who develop new treatments, looking at that treatment and then looking at the scientific method and using it and hoping that the evidence shows their treatment doesn't work. That's a waste of time. And there's a natural excitement about finding something that could be helpful to people. And this is what I think injects bias into research. It's not any malicious intent. It's not evil people trying to put together mental health treatments. It's individuals that are trying to do good and they get excited and that bias creeps in and it's insidious. So it can be bias at the design level, at the selection level, selecting participants for the study. It could be bias in terms of selecting what type of measurements used. It could be bias that we see by omitting some of the limitations of the study in the write-up or presenting the results in a simplistic way and skipping by other results that maybe were contradictory, and in the discussion section of an article, implying causality when the results don't support that. So articles have several parts to them. And sometimes, even though really, ideally, someone who's trying to learn about a particular area reads an entire article on the area, a lot of times individuals just read the abstract or maybe the abstract in the discussion. So the results of a particular study could be correct, meaning they could be subject, of course, to random error, but not necessarily to any overwhelming amount of bias. But the discussion 
section could be biased. The author or authors could put their own spin on the results, and if somebody's only going to read that, then that's really a type of bias. Now you could argue there that that bias is shared by the authors and the person reading the article because they didn't read the results and draw their own conclusions, but instead they jump right to the discussion to see the interpretations of the authors of the article. So bias takes many forms, and because of this, and because we know it's out there, what do we do about it? Can we trust research? Back to that original question. Again, I think in general we can, but we need to be skeptical. When we see a particular article, or even several articles, that support one type of mental health treatment is working, for example, we have to look at articles that show that it doesn't. We have to look at the methodology and challenge that. And, and I think this is fairly important to science advancing, individuals have to be willing to ask for those data sets and run independent analyses and conduct experiments similar to the experiments we see in these articles and see if the findings can be replicated. And too often, this isn't done. Instead, an article is published and mental health practitioners read it and scientists read it and they look at it and say, well, that finding must be true or it's mostly true. We know there's bias in there, but it may not be much bias. Rather than independent verification, rather than running new experiments with the same data or with new data that's collected. And I think this trend where we have a lot of articles being published and not a lot of double checking, not a lot of looking at these articles and challenging them, this to me is a bit worrisome. I think this is only expanding on that original amount of bias, that degree of bias we see in these articles. This information goes forward and people make treatment decisions based on this information and we're not really sure if these treatments work the way those few articles said they do. So it's our responsibility as mental health clinicians, as scientists, to make sure that we limit bias as much as we can when we produce research, and also we need to control for bias in the research of others. Bias is just part of human nature, so it should not be surprising that even something as logical as the scientific method is affected by bias. Whenever we involve people, we involve bias, and we have to make adjustments and try to control for that in a way that makes sense. I hope you found this description of bias in research to be interesting. Thanks for watching.